What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and today we're going to do a really stupid idea. You've noticed we've got this sort of weird train set up here. We've got a caboose at the front, and then five of these iron cars, and we're going to take the Heisler, and we're going to go up to the iron mine, but we're going to go to the smelter first, and what I want to do is go up to the iron mine, fill these five cars with iron, which would be 50 iron, and then drive it down to the smelter from the iron mine, without the engine so we're going to disconnect it and we're going to drive it from the caboose only managing the brakes and hopefully coast our way all the way down to the smelter no problem so that's the objective for today don't know if it's going to work but we're going to go right away to the smelter and then go up to the iron mine from the smelter that way we can make sure the route is set properly and everything should be good this should be an easy trip for the heisler the heisler can pull 316,000 pounds at 3%, and uh, this load, when it's empty, is only 78,000 pounds, which the Heisler could actually pull up 8% if it wanted to. At 8%, the Heisler could pull 85,000 pounds. So, I mean, we're not really going to have any issue getting this up to the iron mine. It should be a pretty easy trip. And then once we're there, we'll just basically back the Heisler up to this one hill point, and then we'll disconnect it and, and ride it down, and hopefully it works. Fully loaded with all five of these cars and all the iron, it's 188,000 pounds, including the caboose. So I feel like if we use just the caboose brakes, maybe some of the other brakes, we should be able to get this thing coasting nice and smoothly down the entire run. And there are some ups. The iron mine run doesn't just go straight down. It does go up at parts. So we are going to have to maintain enough momentum to carry it through that. But I'm hoping it'll work. I think this will be cool if it does. And it'll just sort of be like our first attempt at a gravity train type system. Obviously, if I was making a dedicated gravity line, I would probably want to make it all like constantly down at a relatively consistent angle. So you could just set the brakes once at the top and it would coast at a constant speed. Um, with the ups and downs, we're probably going to have to actually drive it. But I'm hoping we can just sit in the top of the caboose. And, well, actually, we can just let this Heisler go. But I'm hoping we can just basically sit here the whole time and just watch it go. And as we go down the hill, man, these brakes. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping we're going to be able to do today. I have no idea. I have a feeling we might derail, but, you know, we'll save at the top of the iron mine and hopefully make this all work. So we're going to head down to the smelter, like I said, and, uh, you know, get our switches all set. Because, honestly, I don't know the directions that they're all set in. And I want to make sure that we're good to go and we don't crash. Uh, actually, to be honest, we don't even really need to go to the smelter. We just need to go to the Y and then make sure we set the switches from the Y. Because the smelter's a loop, so it doesn't really matter what direction those are set in. But the Y at the hill will matter. So I am out of money now. That's the reason we're doing this. We only have $580. These coal cars are or coal slash iron cars. They're $850 a piece. I wanted to buy like a ton of them. I want to have 10 of them ideally because 10 of them will transport 100 ore all at once and that gets pretty heavy you get into like the 350 400 thousand pound range i think they're like 35 thousand pounds each so it does get heavy when you have 10 of them so it makes sense to just have one train of 10 you need a big engine to pull it and you're good to go um but you know of course right now we can only afford five well i had four and I, I bought one more and now we're broke again so i figure you know what might as well use these five test out the gravity method and if it works we could do the gravity method technically with 10 and we could also see how much money we make with these there is like the whole economy rebalance so hopefully we'll make some money and it'll be good to go you'll notice i didn't talk about the y as we passed the y so i, I just thought i would point that out also, if you guys saw my last video, Cosmo and I did some double locomotive stuff in Railroads Online, and we had issues with the front bar kind of pulling out because it would go straight. Uh, the devs apparently already fixed that. I haven't tried it yet, so something we'll have to definitely try in the future, but I thought I'd mention that they already went ahead and fixed that, so if you guys were wanting to try that double locomotive thing, um, you know, it, it is apparently fixed. So this switch is good. We're going left, and then we're going to go right at the Y at the bottom of the hill. So we're actually going to start coasting now. Because we'll have to use some brakes. And then we'll just kind of set the switches that go towards the smelter. And then we'll head up to the iron mine. Now, we are going up the iron mine the old way. Which is actually normally the way down from the iron mine. Um, but it's pretty good. Like, we could go this way. This would be a, a better way to do a gravity line. Because this one is a constant uphill with no, like, downs and ups and swoops. It only goes down from the iron mine to here. Except then we wouldn't be able to get around here. We need a way to get down from this track 
to the track we're currently on. So we have to take the other route, which does go down at a steeper angle. There's some parts that are like up to 6%. Um, but, you know, it does have some ups and some flat sections. We should be fine, honestly. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. It feels like we're going... Yeah, we're okay. Put on a little bit of brake, a little bit of compressor. Perfect. Alright, so we just gotta check this Y up here. I think the last time we were coming from here, we were coming back from the iron mine. So it's probably set to go to the iron mine now. It is, yeah. So that switch is set to go right. So we just need to let the train pass through, park on the bridge, come back, set these switches, and then we'll be good to go. We're basically gonna have to start climbing here. I think this is actually 4%, like, right away. Uh, which, you know, isn't a big deal. Like I said, the Heisler could pull this load up 8%, so we shouldn't have any issue. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty steep one. So let's just put on our brake now. Let's go and switch these switches over. I just walk through the caboose. This is gonna be fun. I'm actually super excited. I haven't really done any dedicated brake man stuff. I know with the realistic physics, because we have it set on realistic... We should be doing dedicated brake stuff when we're going down hills with loads. Um, but most of the time, to be honest, we've been climbing with loads. And we haven't really done any heavy loads downhill. So if we do, like, ten iron cars downhill, we have to set, like, the back two or three cars on brakes at different levels. Like, 100%, 80%, 60%, or whatever. And kind of scale them back. Because you actually want the back of the train to put some tension on it. So, it should be interesting to try it. I hope the caboose on its own is enough to stop five cars. But if not, we'll have to actually run up the train and set some other brakes at the same time. Although, to be honest, I feel like the one caboose should be good enough to do it. I don't really know how powerful the brakes are on these things. But anyway, all the switches are set. That's all we need to do, that one switch. So let's head up to the iron mine full speed. Look at that, no wheel slip. That's amazing. Probably only, honestly, need like 80% reg. Yeah, this, this thing's a monster. The heights are so good. Need to buy a Climax as well, but, you know, needs some more of that money thing. That money kind of drives the industry in this game. Although, I think iron is going to sell for a lot, so this should actually be a pretty profitable trip. How much money do we have now? We're up to $580. So we're just shy of $600, so we'll see exactly how much we get um, after this. $580. Should be good. And this is five cars of iron, which has ten iron in each... I don't really know how much iron sells for, but this could be a, a thousand dollar plus trip. This could be really exciting. All right, there's one more switch coming up here. We just gotta, uh, it is to the right. That should be fine. This is gonna be a big flat section. This curve needs to be reworked. It's a little bit steep, but this is a big flat section here. So as long as we have some speed coming down from the mountain, we should coast along this pretty easily, but there are some dips. There's some spots that I'm, I'm slightly worried about. We'll have to take a look on the way up here. But I made this route originally just trying to follow the contours of the terrain, not exactly get to the iron mine as smooth as possible. So if we had actually just gone up constantly like we did on the other side, it probably would have been a little bit smoother. But this should be good. I'm so excited for this. You have no idea. I can't wait to actually fill this up and try it out. It's going to be sick. All right, up we go. This is all uphill, so this shouldn't be any issue. You can see that that bridge, though, is actually lower than this hill coming up, I think. But this is, you know, there's some snaky bits here, because we're contoured to the mountain. Which should be fine. The biggest thing that we have to worry about is you want to maintain as much speed as possible without derailing. That's, like, the biggest key, you know? We ideally want to be going as fast as we possibly can the whole time. And we are going to have a lot of weight, so we should stay on the track, I would think. Because that's, like, the biggest thing with now that the cars have realistic weights. I mean, 35,000 pounds a car, that's pretty heavy. Each one of those cars should want to plant itself on the track pretty heavily. If anything, the caboose is going to be the most likely to derail because it's only 11,000 pounds. Which, I guess that would mean that the brakes on the cars would be more effective. Because they have more weight on them, right? More friction. Here you can see a section, so this is a bridge, it, it does come up, see, so it, it dips down here, so we're going to have to have enough speed coming out of this S to make it up this part, to get down to this next part, although it's not that much of a dip up. And then I think, I think that's it, pretty much, and then this is just all uphill to the release point, which is up here. We are going to have to actually back the train a little bit up and kind of stop the train up here, and then I'll just have to, I guess, walk back on my own to pick up the train. Because, uh, I don't, I don't know how the end... Yeah, we'll just leave the Heisler up here, I guess. But yeah, at the top of this S-Bend section, that's basically where we release it, is at this corner. 
Because past that, it's all flat, pretty much, the iron mine. We wouldn't be able to actually coast the cars. There's no incline for it. All right, right here is going to be the release point. So we're going to go fill up. And then we'll basically back the Heisler up to here so that one of these coal cars, or iron cars, I guess, is right over the edge of that hill. And it should be enough to pull the rest of the train down. Because everything else here, this is all way too flat. There's no way we would have enough. I mean, that's technically higher up over there. Um, but I don't think it would have enough momentum to make it this far. I mean, we could try it. This is basically flat. This bridge is definitely flat. I know that. And then this part there past the bridge is flat. And that's all flat to the iron mine. So we could try it right here. I guess this, this part right up here, this corner coming up on my mouse cursor, which I know is really hard to see unless you're in full screen. But this part right there, we're about to hit this corner. We could try it here. This is still uphill. But then after this, it flattens right out. So yeah, we'll actually release it right here. Might have enough speed on that hill to make it around the corner. And then we'll just leave the engine. But this is definitely flat. I don't think this would... Yeah, there's no way. Well, now that we've got that settled, let's uh, get over to the iron mine and fill these cars up. All right, we have 210 iron, which is just ridiculous. It's so much iron. They did change the rates, like I said. So we are getting five iron for every one beam with two lumber. So it's kind of insane. Um, so this is actually a lot easier to fill now, which is great. So we do have 210, which is fantastic. We need, we need more iron cars, basically. This is going to be 50 of it, which will be good. And we can do another 50, and then uh, hopefully that'll be enough to give us, you know, 10 cars to do a big run of 100. And then to the coal mine, we're probably honestly going to want to do, like, double engine and do, like, 20 runs to the coal mine once we fill that up. But this is going to be good, because this will actually get us really going in the progress. The coal mine, I know, takes, like, the iron rails or whatever. And, uh, you know, you need iron to do that. So it, we've, it's, it's really been a struggle to get the iron down to the smelter. This is actually a really, really good change, though, to have the units rebalanced. All right, and get rid of that last one. Perfect. I know people are going to say, why don't you use both chutes to fill it faster? You can, but then I find it's really difficult to, like, move both chutes back up, and then you end up spilling a bunch of iron. It would be easier, I guess, if you had two people, one person manning each chute. But, um... I just prefer to use one and wait a little longer. One thing I'm just realizing too, um, I don't know how I'm going to unload this. Because we're going to be able to go down to the smelter with gravity. And then I guess we just have to get like the braking just perfect to be super slow. But it's got to unload 10 things from each cart. So that takes a while. So it would have to be like the slowest roll past the station. You know what I mean? To like actually unload as it moves and if we screw up that roll ever so slightly then we're screwed and we won't be able to have another chance at it because we don't have an engine to move the you know what? We'll, we'll just see what we get when we're down there the last thing i want to do though is waste the product right we might just have to get it down there and then come pick up the heisler ideally if we were doing this setup we'd leave like a porter or something down there to do some shunting and push the cars um or some other small engine so that we could actually you know maneuver the train when it was in the position but you'd let it do the run completely without an engine so we'll, we're just gonna try it we'll see what happens i don't want to waste product though so i'll probably end up having to sprint back for this uh this engine before we actually do any unloading but we'll see uh, if we make it there i'll be impressed that's really the first thing to be honest all right perfect the train is fully loaded we have 160 iron left so let's head on back to the drop point hopefully this works Shouldn't be too big of an issue. I mean, obviously the Heiser's going to be able to push it. I'm I'm worried that we're not going to be able to break going down the hill. And that Bob Caboose only has four wheels. All right. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't know what the braking power of the Caboose is. We might actually have to use some cars as well. But the point is we're going to be the world's greatest brake man. This is going to be exactly all, all of the training that we have done up to this point is going to come down to this one moment where we'll completely control 180,000 pounds going down a track powered by gravity it's gonna be fantastic i can't wait we're i'm this is it it's the moment of truth all right it seems like we're actually coasting right now and we're about to hit the hill which is right after this corner so we should be good so here's what we're gonna do we're actually gonna just disconnect this oh god no we're not never mind uh hold on let's jump onto the caboose can i can i okay maybe maybe this is a bad idea you know what let's actually stop i can't jump into the caboose yeah let's just let's go with plan a Hit the brakes. There we go. Perfect. Alright, that first car should be on the hill. 
pulling it. I guess we can we can go a little bit further back just to make sure. That hill, like right there, you can see it just behind that tree. All right, it should be on a hill now. Perfect. Let's hit the brake. Excellent. So the Heisler should just stay here until we come back to get it. Just throw some more fuel in it just to make sure and uh, it keeps the compressor running, hopefully. Long enough. All right, and then uh, this is it. Here we go. We're moving. <laughs> All right. We are off. Let us let's go. <laughs> oh man, I can't even see the front of the train. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be perfect. Let's start with the uh, nice uh actually no, we probably don't need brake yet. Dude, we are gonna pick up speed so fast. Okay, let's put a nice 40 30 percent brake. Oh god, it's too much. 100 percent brake. This thing doesn't even come close to slowing this down, does it? Okay, we're gonna need brakes on these cars. Uh, yeah, we are gonna need brakes on these cars. 100% on this guy. Yeah, and then let's let's get rid of the caboose brake here for a sec. Oh no, that's too much, too much. Let off that. All right, then we gotta get yeah we gotta get around this hill. We're good. We're good. That was... Oh, man. This is gonna pick... Okay, so I think we're gonna do 100% on this car. The, like... And then we'll use the caboose to kind of regulate with that car. But we need to get around this hill first. This is, like, the flat section. And then it's gonna go really fast, really quick. Okay. 100% there. That's too early. Too early. It needs more weight on the hill. Oh, my God. This is gonna... It's gonna drop off so quick. There it goes. Okay, now 100%. Yeah, it's still gonna pull against that. Okay, perfect. Perfect, now let's man the caboose. Okay, I think this is gonna be good, actually. One car at 100%. Picking up some speed. Pretty smooth, though. We do need to get enough speed to get through the next dip. As soon as we get to this flat bridge, we're gonna have to, like, kill off that brake. Oh, man, this caboose seems kind of sketchy. The cars look pretty stable. Maybe we don't even need the caboose. Maybe we could have done with 50% on that car. Okay, we gotta, we gotta cut this car out now. Yeah, because we need to coast across this bridge. Perfect. Up this little hill. This is awesome. This is so cool. Oh, man. I, apparently gravity tracks are like a real thing that people have actually done. I don't know if a dude actually rode the cars or not. Man, I mean, someone would have to, right? To man the brakes? Okay, I think we can just use the caboose now. It was just that one section that was really steep I was really concerned about. Now we can just like, you know, regulate out here. 50%, 49%, whatever, close enough. So cool. This actually kind of feels like you're a train driver, but in a weird way. It's like you're not really controlling the train. The train's just sort of driving. You're just kind of along for the ride. We are picking up some speed. Let's go to 100% on the caboose brake. Oh, God. That corner seems so fast. It's fine. It's fine. That's <laughs> so cool. I feel like the caboose only having four wheels, like, it's gonna shake more than the cars. The cars seem like they're more stable than the caboose is, to be honest. Alright, let's go no brake. We need a coast here for a bit until we get to the next hill. Now, the next hill is pretty steep, and it goes down to that Y section on the bridge, and it's definitely gonna have some speed to it with some, some tight-ish curves. So it might have to do more than just the caboose brake. The car brakes are definitely more powerful than the caboose, though, but I think that's just the weight, because they have, like, 35,000 pounds or whatever with car and load, and the caboose is only 11,000 pounds on its own. I think it's just not heavy enough to do anything. Are we gonna have enough momentum? Yeah, it's just, we're flat. This is all flat ground. It's just the turns with the friction slowing us down. We'll carry some speed, right? You make it around this corner, and then we get onto the next hill. Let 
this really makes me want to make a dedicated gravity track at some point. I don't know what for yet. Seems kind of weird because you still have to bring, like, we're going to have to bring the Heisler down just to bring all these cars back up, right? So you still need an engine to bring the cars back up. Um, but, like, I, I don't know where you'd want a gravity track in this. Okay, put the brake on the caboose at full. Oh, oh, I almost got yeeted off the train. I'm trying to get up onto this again. I, I, it won't let me do it. I don't think caboose brakes are enough here. We are going way too fast. Hunter brake on that. There we go. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Don't shake off. Okay. Yeah, the caboose brakes are, they're not, they're not strong enough. You need like five of them. I guess the point of the caboose was for you to have a spot to live as a brake, man. Not necessarily to actually, you know, break the whole train with it. I think we should be good now, though. Caboose brakes are still on at 100. This is awesome. This is so cool. Keep going. Perfect. Perfect. Now this is just 3% down to the smelter. Probably just be good with the caboose brakes at 100%, honestly. This is so cool. We can do this with a bigger load, too. We don't even really need the caboose. We just need to ride on top of 10 cars. And, you know, man the back two, probably. It seems like one is good enough. You have one car for five, so manning the back two with ten would probably be enough to control the whole load, no issue. Probably even do it with, like, one at 50 and one at 100. And it would keep the whole load at a nice constant speed. It's pretty neat. Oh, are we losing... Too much speed? No? No? I don't, I don't think we're gaining or losing speed at this point. Alright, I don't know how we're going to unload this either. We're just going to see where we end up, I guess. What direction... Okay, we're going the long way around. Which is good. That'll give us time to slow down. And there's the load unload zone. So if we're really, like, good on the speed, we might be able to... Do it in one fell swoop. Oh boy. I don't know if this is going to be possible. Alright. We need to basically regulate the caboose until we're at like the perfect speed. So we're just crawling along. Seems too fast still. Cut out a little bit of the brake. This is so cool. This is actually like the coolest. I need a little shunt yard here. And then I'll just park a porter. So if people ever decide to... Send iron all the way down to the smelter through gravity. It's totally possible. That was actually a lot smoother than I thought it was. it was. Like, there was one spot there where it seemed like we were a little too fast. Might derail, but other than that, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's uh, give it more break. A lot more break. Is that going to be enough? Need to slow down, dude. We're going to miss the unload here. Okay, good, 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 good. Crawling. There we go. Let's run to the front. That brake should be off, so we should just be crawling along at this speed. I don't know if that's too fast. Let's slow it down just a little bit. Smidge of brake. There we go. That's a crawl. Perfect. Alright, and then we'll just stand here and unload as it comes along. Oh, it unloads really fast. Okay, the other ones kind of unload a little bit slower. That's perfect. Unload you. Awesome. Awesome. Unload you. I can't believe this is... <laughs> Just with braking. We're still using the initial speed from the hill. This is so cool. I can't believe you can actually control the brakes enough and you can carry enough momentum for this to work. That's fantastic. That's the whole load. 100% the whole load. Completely empty. No mist. Iron. You can still hold a thousand here, which is just insane. Alright, now we gotta put the full brakes on this guy. We're gonna have to come back and pick you up. With the Heisler. Uh, 42 out of a thousand. That's because it's building right away. Yeah, there's cordwood still. How much cordwood do we have left? 10 out of a hundred. So we'll have to do a cordwood run at some point. Let's check the money real quick. 580. Oh, we went from 580 to 1580. So it was exactly a thousand dollars. 
So it is $1,000, $200 per car. So it's $20 per iron. That's not bad, actually. That's pretty good. A thousand bucks for one of these trains. And then we've got another. That means we have another, like, what? $3,000 sitting at the iron mine. And we could actually put another, well, only one more car on it, pretty much. But still, we'll have to get at least one more car, maybe two more cars. Well, that was definitely one of the smoothest episodes I've ever had of uh, Railroads. Can't say anything really went wrong. It went exactly as planned. It worked out perfectly. We got the whole load delivered and we didn't even need an engine to drop it off. That's kind of amazing. But I'm going to have to go walk up all the way back up the track and get the Heisler. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I should have left another engine here and then somehow had a way to leave engines up at the iron mine. Eventually, you'll just run up with too many engines in one place. It makes kind of a lot of sense to just leave the engine attached to the train and just glide the whole thing down with the engines and the cars at the same time. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know other things you'd like to see in Railroads Online. We obviously have a lot of work to do and a lot more industries to connect, but it's really exciting that uh, the industry is rebalanced now and the iron mine is just so much easier to, you know, fill with iron. We've got a lot more iron to deliver and obviously a lot more cordwood as well to keep this smelter operation going. But uh, we're in the running here to make some big, big dollars. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.